Hello, this is Ryan Womack, Data Librarian at Rutgers University Libraries. In this video sequence, we are going to be talking about machine learning with Amarel using R. Now, there's a couple of things we're mixing together in these workshops. We're trying to introduce people to the Amarel High Performance Computing Environment at Rutgers, which is supported by the Office of Advanced Research Computing. And we're also talking about just how to work with large data uh, in general, and how to clean and begin to analyze that type of data. So this is, there's some machine learning. It's not a um, uh, very detailed uh, course in machine learning, but we are providing some introduction uh, in that direction. So the first video, this one that you're listening to right now, is we're going to talk about Amarel and the high-performance computing environment at Rutgers. It's going to be relatively brief um, because, as I will mention repeatedly, the Office of Advanced Research Computing, OARC, provides their own training resources, their own videos that are much more detailed than this. And so consider this an introduction and an invitation to go to OARC, sign up for their events, and uh, start to learn more. So I'm talking about Amarel. Amarel is the major cluster for high-performance computing, which is generally available to anyone at Rutgers. Anyone at Rutgers can get an account and start using those resources. So uh, if you have one URL that you want to jump off from, uh, it is this GitHub site, github.com slash ryandata slash Amarel R. That's also linked in the description below. Uh, that page links out to the things that I'm going to be talking about here. So it links to the OARC page on Amarel. Uh, that cluster is named, by the way, in honor of a Rutgers computer science professor, uh, a founding member of the computing science department at Rutgers, Saul Amarel. And you can see more information on the OARC site. Um, let's, let's take a look at the OARC site right now. So this is the Office of Advanced Research Computing. Uh, you can see they lead with Amarel at this point. There are some other uh, resources and clusters that they maintain, such as Cal Caliburn, but um, let's just stick with learning about Amarel for today. Um, in order to get an account, you can just click here to sign up for an account, and it'll take you to a form to request access. Uh, you do need to provide some information about what department you're coming from, what kind of research you or, or uses you, you plan to have for this, for Amarel. Because like, like all organizations, uh, OARC also has to justify its impact, its significance to the Rutgers Research Enterprise. So do your part and uh, let, Am let uh, OARC know how you're going to be using this, this resource. Uh, something that people ask me often and they're signing up for this, is there is this field for uh, name of the PI of your research group, the principal investigator of your research group. So Amarel has dedicated resources for certain research groups. If you are working with the research group providing this information, let's OARC give you access to those things in a very streamlined and organized way. So that's a good idea if you have a PI but you don't need to fill that in. So you don't need a PI, you don't need a PI's approval to use this system. You can just use it on your own, that's perfectly fine. Um, and that's one of the things that's not required here. Another um, key caveat is uh, you, you cannot use Amarel to work with confidential or sensitive data. So health information, for example, that's under HIPAA restrictions, um, this is not a place for that. It does not have a, that's kind of security setup. Um, so uh, please be aware of that and do not use it for any kind of uh, sensitive data of that type. Um, so signing up is easy. You should get a relatively quick response in a couple of days to that request, and you'll have an account set up on the, on the system. In order to use Amarel remotely, you have to be on the Rutgers network 
So what does that mean? If we're trying to get to the Rutgers network remotely, we need to be using the VPN. So the VPN um, instructions are, if I keep track of my tabs, uh, at uh, this, this uh, little window, I have a guide to um, some of the links and things that I'm talking about. So the GitHub site, the OARC site is just oarc.rutgers.edu. And this VPN site is via the Security Operations Center, soc.rutgers.edu slash VPN. If you have not used the VPN before, you must activate it with this button. Uh, in order to connect to the VPN, once you have told Rutgers that you'd like to use the VPN, you will need to, at the time of this video, again, I'm going to caution people that I'm not planning to just update this video every time there's a small technical change. So please check the links for updates, check for the latest requirements. Uh, but at the time of this recording in April 2021, um, you will need the Cisco AnyConnect client for your device. Um, and you will also need to use the paired uh, Duo app in most cases uh, along with that. So those products kind of work together. Duo is the two-factor authentication system that supports this. So you would install the Cisco AnyConnect client. And I'm not going to show that here because I'm actually recording on my desktop computer that does not connect to, to Rutgers. Uh, so um, I'm not going to walk through this. Um, I will point you to the resources that that will help you with that. But get the Cisco client, launch the Cisco, Cisco client. When you connect to the VPN, it's going to ask for your NetID and password, and it's going to ask for some other token of authentication. So if you install the Duo app, I think for 95% of users, it will be most con convenient to have the Duo app on your phone. And the Duo app on your phone will um, light up with a push request uh, that you'll be able to tap and say, yes, I approve the logging into the VPN via my phone. So we now have proved to the system that you are someone who owns uh, your own phone, uh, your, your personal phone. You've provided that second authentication token and you'll be logged in. So. Once you're on the, the Rutgers network, you can use a, a terminal shell just uh, in, you know, sort of raw format. Um, and you can SSH into Amarel. Now I'm going to show you that since I'm not on the uh, Rutgers VPN, it's not going to find these resources right now. You must be on the Rutgers VPN to connect. Um, and I can connect via a, a terminal. I can also connect via what's called the open on demand system. And um, if you if you Google open on demand, you'll see that, that this is a a common uh, platform for shared computing, um, which Rutgers has a copy of it installed on the Amarel cluster, and you can go to it by going to ondemand.hpc.rutgers.edu. But again, you must be on the Rutgers network for that address to resolve. Um, what this will give you would be a, a graphical environment that can support things like RStudio. It'll support a Jupyter notebook. And so you can um, interact more easily with the jobs running on the, on the system. You can also just get a plain desktop if that's what you'd like. Um, to it, that's the way you'd prefer to do your work. So uh, the on-demand system is available. The um, terminal access is available. And I, th I think at, at this point, I, I would just like to emphasize the training resources that are available from OARC. So if you go under help and support here, you'll see there are two, uh, there's FAQs, which answer a lot of um, questions as well. Um, there are, and let me show you the most important uh, FAQ. If you still have questions, you can actually write directly to help 
at oarc.rutgers.edu, and they can um, work with you on any kind of specific needs of um, running specific software, different kinds of resources, uh, any, any hangups you're having. Uh, very helpful team, wonderful team that's working there. So if we go to uh, the tabs under help and support for training and scientific consultation and the technical user guide, those two are uh, what I would call the sort of prime places to get uh, getting started training material. So OARC has their own workshop calendar that you can click and sign up for workshops. They have a regular series of um, what are called weekly open workshops where they discuss various topics uh, and they have periodic uh, intros to the Emerald cluster, intros to the Linux command line system. So those, those are things that will help you get started uh, and dive in and using the system. Also, there are recordings of these videos available here. So you can just um, click view now and you will uh, get access to the um, past recordings of these workshops. So there's really quite a lot of very interesting content here. Uh, the open workshops cover a lot of different um, software, a lot of different topics, and you can actually um, search them for, you know, specific topics like R or Python or um, other tools that you might want to use on the cluster. Uh, they're very informative, uh, GIS. Um, and so I highly recommend, highly encourage those. Um, the other thing you'll see under the technical user guide is the full details of, you know, all those nuts and bolts that you need to work with the system. So where are the files located? Um, a couple of general cautions, right? So when you log into Amarel, you will be placed on a login node that's shared by everybody logging into the system. Uh, as they say here, do not run your research applications on the login node. You are going to slow things down for everyone if you do that. You want to take advantage of the cluster and run your jobs out on the cluster via the Slurm job scheduling system, uh, S-L-U-R-M, which you can again find uh, help on that from OARC, from their training. Uh, you can also Google Slurm and you'll see some user guides to that software. Uh, from a very quick introductory point of view, there are really two main commands that you're definitely going to want to know about there, srun and sbatch. So srun submits a single shared job. And the basic example that's here on the cluster uh, cluster user guide is this line s run python dash c print right so we're asking python to run this print command to calculate the multiple product of that multiplication and return it to us um, but we're not doing it on the login node we are doing it via sharing the job out to the system so it it puts the job in a queue It'll give you this notice that it's waiting for resources. And then when it gets the resources, it runs and returns a result. This will happen really quickly, less than a second, usually for some fast operation like this. It, but the process is the same. If you have a large job that is going to need a lot of memory or a lot of nodes to run, um, it'll be put in the queue. The Slurm scheduling system will look for a place on the cluster that has sufficient space to run that. Put it, you know, queue it up. When the time comes, it'll run the job and return it back to you. Um, Sbatch is the sort of um, more advanced brother of that command. Uh, I'm going to scroll down a little bit to show an example here. Uh, Sbatch uh, comes with a lot of settings that specify the amount of memory, the amount of nodes that you're requesting. The amount of time you would like the job to run. Um, we can queue all that up and then we can submit a batch file. So a script in 
R or Python or whichever, uh, just a shell script in, um, in, in any sort of command line file that you want to run gets submitted. And this would be a preferred method for, you know, really larger jobs um, that we know are computational intensive. They're going to take some time to run. And we set it up so that the output of the um, calculations or whatever we're doing is put into an output file, right? So we can submit this, let it just run whenever it, it feels like it, and check back later for the output. We've got everything taken care of. Uh, if you go to the OARC trainings or, or watch their videos, you'll see more detailed examples of that. So srun, sbatch, um, you can also, again, as I mentioned, use the GUI system, the open on demand system, um, which will look and feel much like uh, tools you're look, used to looking at, like RStudio. Once you launch an RStudio environment in the GUI cluster, uh, you'll be essentially in RStudio. Uh, and the final things I'll mention here before closing off this video is uh, discussion of the file directory. So you have a home directory where things are kept on a long-term basis, but it's not the high performance big area that's very fast and accessible. There's also this scratch directory, which um, you can put very large files in. It's just be aware that it is not, um, not permanent. It is not backed up. If you something gets messed up there, you'll have to recreate it. Um, and you know this is not a long-term storage. The scratch, as the name would imply, is not a long-term storage area. And you may want to, you may be interested in some of the other aspects here, but um, home and scratch are what you need to know to get get started. Um, and in terms of navigating around those directories, that's sort of Linux slash Unix basics, which I'm not going to cover in this video. You can you can follow up with uh, training. You can use the the pre-installed software on the cluster via their module system, but you may also want to install your own software, and you're perfectly free to do that um, as you would on a Linux system. You can pull files and run the install scripts. Um, so that's described here. If you're if you've done that in a Linux environment, this is going to be um, relatively straightforward, except you don't have root access. Be, be aware of that. Um, if, if this is new to you, then I, again, I would encourage you to sign up for some of the training and, and reach out for additional help from OARC on that. There are actually quite a lot of options, but it is m more of a do-it-yourself system than you might be used to if you haven't done this kind of thing before. Um, but working with the OARC team, you know, I'm sure that you'll be able to configure, fi find uh, the tools that work for you and configure the tools that work for you. So just again to review, we have talked about getting connected via the VPN, Cisco in Connect, um, and the Duo associated Duo app. Uh, we've talked about getting an Amarel account, um, the types of things that you can do once you log into Amarel, and again, always the um, additional training that is available from OARC. So I'm going to stop here as an as, with that introductory material and the next video, we're going to uh, actually get into our studio and start working with data because that's the main event here. We're going to uh, work with some uh, large data. So thanks, thanks for your attention and uh, stay tuned for or jump over to.